Vince Taylor and Buffalo on the Brain, proudly bring to you the Mafia Hot Seat, a Built in Buffalo production. When it's too tough for them, it's just right for us. Be ready. It might be chilly. Bill's Mafia. Boy, have I got a special treat for you. Last but not least in the Mafia hot seat this week is founder of the Built in Buffalo Network, DM3. How are you doing, Dave? Vince, I am on the hot seat and I can already feel it. It's it's getting quite steamy in here. This this is going to be fun because we've been trying to do this for a long time. And it's usually me that's saying, hey, I, I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. But here we are. We're going to do it. We're going to we're going to knock this one out. It's it's painless. I promise. I promise. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. So, you know, the drill. I have 10 questions in front of me. Hmm. Let's go with number three. I like this because it's it's a more open ended question, so it should get some good discussion going. But uh, I have a feeling of where you're going to go. What do you think the biggest area of concern for this team is? We're bringing pretty much everybody back. You know, you can say we're losing John Brown. We're getting a same caliber type player in Emmanuel Sanders to take his role. But you know, I don't feel like there's any real glaring holes. But what do you think the biggest area of concern for this team is? Ooh, I could probably go in a few different directions. There's obviously no glaring needs um, because, like you said, we brought we brought in Emmanuel Sanders, which I believe is going to complement Stephon Diggs really well. He his route running is top five in the NFL, so I don't I don't see that as as like a lose lose situation. I think that's going to be a plus. He's going to be another safety blanket for Josh. One thing that I'm concerned with, and this can kind of go two ways, is the interior of the offense and defensive line. Um, And I'll I'll kind of elaborate on that by saying I wasn't impressed with our guard play, and I don't think a lot of Bills fans were last season. Everybody wants to talk about the run game, and was it the backs? Was it the line? Was it the scheme? Was it the play calling? Did we just not try to run? So I, I I like John Feliciano, and I have faith in this coaching staff in the front office to see that there's something there with Cody Ford, and we have to give him a shot because this is this is it. I mean, he's he's going to be playing left guard, and you know, barring any kind of injuries or anything. So we didn't necessarily go out and upgrade that position. We we brought back Feliciano. Um, team friendly contract, you know, Cody Ford, it's a, it's a big, what if right there. So Brian Dable was, was very outspoken, you know, talking about the fact that I don't have any pressure to install a run package. I just want to do it when we need to do it and do it correctly. Um, and with the defensive line, everybody is placing a lot of, on Star Latulale's shoulders coming back from not playing football since the AFC wildcard game against the Texans in 2019. Everybody thinks that he's going to be the savior of this defensive line. And he's an average one tech defensive tackle. And he, he plays his position like he's supposed to. He does his job not to take anything from Bill Belichick, but he does his job. Um, so, is, is that going to be the difference maker? You know, is Harrison Phillips going to step up? Is Ed Oliver going to step up? You know, where are we going to line up Gregory Rousseau? I think it's still the unknown, and we didn't address it really at all um, in the offseason via free agency, via the draft. Um, so they're placing a lot. They have a lot riding on Star Latule, you know, shoring up this run defense and hoping that that was the biggest component that was missing last year and it will help you know Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds it will help Ed Oliver playing back in his three tech natural position um other than that uh I'm still not sold on CB2 um now if Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott looked at the the roster that it's currently constructed I'm not sold on Levi Wallace I think we know who he is I think when Levi Wallace lines up opposite of Tredavious White, we know 
who he is. I'm not saying he's a bad CB2 because he could probably be a CB2 on just about any other team in the NFL. But I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned if there's – he's been targeted. I mean, he's been targeted in games, and it's – it's just one of those things like I, I want someone to come in and, and, and beat him out for his position. And now we have a guy in Dane Jackson, and I'm really excited to see what he brings. So if I had to, I guess, rank them in order, um, I would say defensive line would be, I don't want to call it a hole, but it's it's going to be my biggest kind of what if. You know, if everything, no pun intended here, if the stars align, Hopefully they can get back to form of 2019. Um, and then I would go offensive line, interior offensive line, because I think our tackles are going to be our tackles for a while. And I think that they've solidified themselves um, in the position with Dawkins and Daryl Williams. I think those guys, they're going to be there. They played at a really high caliber in 2020. So I think we're good there. And then it's CB2. So I went off on a huge tangent there, but. It is what it is. <laughs> you covered all your bases there, and you hit all the. You, you really hit all the all the hot button issues. Um, when you're talking about not wanting to upgrade CB two, I I get it. Like he, we've had good pass defenses with Levi back there, and we decided to upgrade the pass rush. I guess to me, it didn't have to be one or the other. You still could have found a way. You still right now can find a way to get Stephen Nelson in here if you so choose, but. They want Trey to be over here and shut this down because they want to funnel the ball this way. And I don't really know the answer to that. I mean, maybe that's true. But And they say, well, they like Levi. Do they really like Levi? I know they bring him back, but they give him a peanuts contract. And they don't really give him any true competition. If you're going to call EJ Gaines or Josh Norman competition, I don't know. I don't know if that's really competition. I, I, I question that a little bit. The thing about Levi Wallace that kind of gets me is that he he always plays the man, which means he's not going to get the turnovers. He plays his man, which doesn't allow him to play the ball, which Tredavious White does. I, I don't make fun of Levi Wallace, but I'm kind of saying he's the guy that tackles the guy that catches the ball. Yes. If, I, I am super pumped, actually, for preseason because I do want to see what Dane Jackson has. We had such a small sample size. Everybody's pounding the table for him. Um, I'm a supporter of Dane Jackson, but if he can't beat out Levi Wallace, he can't beat out Levi Wallace. And, and like you said, there's, there has to be a, a trust factor in this defensive line and all the stuff that they've done. I mean, you've seen Mario Addison come in underweight and he looks, he looks in, like he's impeccable in impeccable shape. Star came in in amazing shape. You know, Ed Oliver, Sean McDermott even came out and said, you know, he was asked in a press conference, what's your thoughts on what Ed Oliver can do this year? He said, he's going to change the game. So they have, faith in him on top of the fact, you know, that they, they brought in, they drafted Rousseau, they drafted Basham, you know, they, they, they just have this faith in this defensive line. And to me, I think that they already know what they have in the other four guys playing in the second or the four guys that play in the secondary. And then if you add in Teron Johnson, they feel like they can work with that. DM three. What else you got for me? Nothing, man. It, this has been fun. I, I probably could have kept going on for an hour. You know how I am. Once I start talking, I don't stop. So but no, this is good, man. This is great. In in Vince's podcast on on Mondays, if you guys don't listen, you need to listen. If you guys need to pick me up, Vince is probably one of the funniest dudes I've I've ever <laughs> listened to on a podcast, and all in a great way. Um, and Vince is since his podcast has come over, he's helped out the guys, and I I just couldn't be more blessed to have him on our network. Oh shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me on the team. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of all the guys out here, especially you and a rich doing your thing on Saturday nights, the Billsology. It's one of my, when you put it in podcast form, yeah. it is one of my favorite things to listen to over the weekend. Um, I got a few different things I like to put in my ear when I'm like mowing or that kind of thing. Right. Uh, Billsology is right up there. So if you're not familiar with Billsology, make sure you go find that on the YouTube channel and you can sometimes find it on the podcast network as well. <laughs> it should be up there weekly now. We're, we're going to, I'm going to make a habit of do, putting all of our live shows on our podcast network. So it'll be up there. Okay. DM three. Appreciate your time tonight. Vince. I appreciate you, my guy. All right. Have a good one. You too.